everyone. Welcome to Garden Fork Radio. You're here with Rick and Eric. Good morning, Eric. I haven't heard from you in such a long time, my friend. Um, yeah, it's good to hear your voice. We just haven't been able to connect for one reason or another. It's uh, Sometimes, despite all the connections we have, it's hard to connect. It is. Um, you know, we um, have uh, fairly busy lives outside of this, and now that spring's here, uh, it's, uh, you know, during the winter, we both just kind of sit around and stare out the window, but uh, when spring's here, you got to work at it to, uh, to get on the... Uh, computer and uh, spend time uh, communing with each other it's like boom i i spent the whole weekend outside trying to get a million things done and my um my diy uh watering irrigation system for my raised bed garden um broke probably i didn't i don't think i drained one part of it correctly and so the pipes froze oh yeah and they're all slightly below grass level so the mower doesn't run into them Hmm. so i'm like trying to repair pipe that's about an inch underground um it was and of course it was sunday afternoon i didn't want to drive all the way in the town to go to the hardware store so i'm scrambling through all my plumbing collection i made it work but it's has about five pipe clamps in there it's not pretty yeah (laughs) yeah uh you know i I know what that's like um we uh, have been doing a lot of work around here and um you know i've just about got the yard into you know, steady state production mode. You know, I've, I've got as much uh, uh, garden as I can handle. Uh, you know, we're not putting any more garden in, and it's just keeping it watered, keeping it weeded, keep growing it up. Trying to take pictures this time, and so you know, I could do some videos and and, and stuff uh, later on with it as we progress with the the projects. But uh, trying to be much more diligent about. Um, uh, photo documenting and, uh, and video documenting this year, uh, the process and how things are going. And then, uh, of course, then you have to wait till the end of the year so you can see how it turns out. But my uh, my uh, potato tower has uh, finally really taken off, oh, and cool. I'm, I'm thrilled with it. And uh, it looks kind of cool. So uh, I'm, um, I, I've, I've talked about that, haven't I? Yeah, but tell us again. Did you did you build the tower or buy it or? No, I built it. I just took a. Um, uh, length of, uh, of uh, metal wire fencing and uh, tied it into a loop with um, into a big circle like, like a basket, a barrel. like a barrel, uh, with uh, some cable ties to hold it closed. And I bought uh, straw, hay, and uh, I put down a layer of hay, a layer of um, mushroom uh, compost. compost and then I had uh, seed potatoes that I had uh, been. Well, actually, I bought them at the uh, the uh, farm supply place, and I had already uh, cut them up uh, with a, at least one eye on each uh, segment, and uh, left them out so they'd skin over a little bit, kind of harden just mm-hmm. some, and then put them around the edges, and then another layer of hay, more compost more potatoes and I have like four different uh, varieties of potatoes and you put them around the edges and then uh, you keep it watered and uh, they're like I think I forget how many I've counted now I think there were five layers of potatoes and you keep it watered and the potatoes now are coming out of the sides yep. of this through the fence and they're they're growing like crazy, and and they make uh, because they're different varieties. They have somewhat different colors and textures, so that's interesting. Yeah, you'll have but to send then, me a picture of this. I will. And uh, but then it's uh, in late uh, summer when the potatoes will actually wilt and die out. Uh, I'll just clip the uh, the uh, cable ties holding it together. It will spring apart, and I should be able to harvest all those potatoes. I'm going to have to build one of these. Yeah, it's it's uh, yeah. I'm I'm in lazy man stuff. So this this is pretty lazy man. <laughs> Although I did screw up. Uh, this um, hay was supposed to be uh, weed free, or one supposed to germinate and sprout that yeah. kind of stuff. Uh, it's supposed to be straw, but there was an awful lot of seed in it, and I used what was left over as walkway uh, mulching in my gardens. Oops. And and now, yeah, I had uh, uh, hay or whatever that stuff is growing up, uh, huge amounts of it in my garden that I had to get in there and weed out by hand. 
I use wood chips for that. The, uh, the, uh, there's a number of uh, tree removal companies in the town. Mm -hmm. And the town garage actually lets them dump a bunch of wood chips uh, in the town near the town garage. And people just go and haul them off for free. I don't know oh, if that wow. happens at every town, but um, so we can get wood chips. Well, just, around uh, here, all the tree removal companies um, uh, chip up their uh, their trees, all of them, and then uh, sell them to the mulchers, and then the mulchers uh, keep them go. turned over and, and then sell them to us. And so there, there's nothing free around here. Sorry. Oh, well. <laughs> My friendship with you is free, Rick. That's right. By the way, uh, we are classic here for rambling on, but there are a couple of cool things we want to talk about today. We're going to talk about a little about podcasting, uh, some battery replacement aha moment I had, and then some uh, a bunch of viewer mail that we wanted to talk about. Rick, you sent me a website uh, that is all about podcasting, a very DIY kind of nurturing site i would call it that is aligned with prx which is the nonprofit public radio exchange it's called transom how, how did you find it uh well i've been listening to a transom podcast for a good while and what they actually do is run a podcasting school uh in boston actually out on uh, cape cod and it's pretty darned expensive to um go up there for i think a six-week course and uh, just turn you into a podcaster. And this is about doing, you know, making stories and just take you soup to nuts through the, the entire thing. It's like radio producing. It, it is. It's about uh, how to do it. And you actually turn out product uh, as you go through this. But they've been writing these side articles for those of us that can't afford it or can't, um, you know, don't have the time to go uh, about how to actually do quality podcasting um, unlike not, us <laughs> i wasn't gonna say that <laughs> uh, it's um it really you know what equipment you need how to run it uh which software to use or which ones they recommend um you know how to really think about it uh one of the things that they do with all of their projects that we never do is script it out beforehand of course, yep. they're, they're in the storytelling business. This is more like, you know, uh, long think pieces. Right, right. But, uh, but still, uh, it, it's a fascinating um, uh, area. And, you know, like you say, uh, what was that you said? Uh, uh, podcast or the new cupcakes? Yeah, podcasting is a new cupcake. Yeah. And so uh, transom.org, and you can read all about it. And they're just a whole bunch of how-to articles, how to get started, how to think about it, how to... Uh, work it all the way through, uh, and it, it, they're fascinating, and they're from uh, people that you uh, listen to all the time on the uh, Alex Chadwick, you know, all, all these guys you listen to. Um, you'll see uh, articles from them about how they work, and how they work is, I think, the most fascinating part of it. Yeah, I was inspired to try and get some better nuanced uh, audio quality out of our show here, um, so I was playing around with the different microphones I have and I'm going to try and build a little foam box so it'll try and cut down on the echo in the room um, and then try and would use what's called a comp compressor filter while doing the audio edit to kind of I don't know audio is so hard for me because my ears are shot so it all sounds the same to me you know yeah but uh, you know the uh, the phone booth is is one thing they all uh, talk about. It's amazing the number of uh, podcasters and high quality uh, uh, big podcasts that are uh, done in uh, uh, clothing closets full of uh, old clothes to uh, absorb all the racket and the uh, the uh, vibrations, the acoustic bounce, the, yeah. the acoustic bounce out of it. Uh, and then uh, it's also amazing how much they sweat in there while they're making yeah. those shows. I've actually been in small sound booths and there's two things. It is incredibly quiet. So my ears ring really loud mm -hmm. and man, it, it can get hot. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Because they'll, they'll shut down the uh, air vents, turn off the air conditioning, turn off the uh, if there's a ceiling fan, turn that off. Uh, try to eliminate all kinds of noise. There you go. So it's called transom.org if you guys are thinking about um, podcasting. And we actually have a comment later about the 
style of our podcasting we're going to touch on later. But okay, I'm, I'm uh, by let the me way, ask you this. Let me ask you this though. Which microphone are you using now? I'm using the Shotgun, the Rode Shotgun mic, which has okay. a it's a higher quality video camera microphone. It has an XLR uh, plug on it, and then I'm running it through a Blue Icicle. That's the brand, Blue Icicle. XLR to USB adapter, and then that is feeding into the computer. Okay. I also have a blue, the blue is the company, it's called a Snowball. It's a silver round USB microphone. But I'm told that, uh, well, I read that the XLR microphones, microphones that are built for being on, used with uh, cameras or recording, high quality recording equipment, are better usually than a USB microphone. Ah, well, see, I'm using a USB microphone, and so um, I may have to uh, invest in something a, a little higher quality. Well, our garden fork, you know, maybe someone will send us a check and we'll buy you a microphone. <laughs> but we both, <laughs> there's so. both, there's an echo on both our ends that I can hear in the edit, so um, and I'd like to try and figure out how to do that. But anyway, uh, let's move on to other cool cool stuff here. I had a an epiphany. We... Um, have a, uh, a training collar for our dogs. We've used it to teach them to, you know, come and not run away and not eat, not eat garbage in the park and stuff. And they're, they have a battery operated. And I was going to ship this back to the company to get the batteries replaced. And I was like, wait a minute, it's out of warranty. And it's going to be a labor charge, a shipping charge, plus the batteries. And I'm right. looking at this thing and there's six screws holding the thing together. And I'm like, well, I have a screwdriver. You so, bet. I went on to this thing called the internet and typed in the brand name and model number and then typed in battery. And sure enough, on um, eBay and several sites, they sell replacement batteries for this training collar and all sorts of other things. But if you, um, it was kind of cool. So I ordered the replacement batteries and I think I saved a bit of money and some time that way. But it just occurred to me that if you, if the battery dies on something that you own, if you just type in the model number and brand of the thing and then battery, more than likely someone sells, it's probably a knockoff battery. You know, it's a, it's a third party battery, right. with, but it has the correct plug on it and it'll go right in. You know, if you're really in a hurry, uh, we have these, um, at least here, these specialty uh, battery and light bulb shops. Yes. And, uh, you walk in with the piece and, um, and show them. And they almost always have it in stock somewhere. Now it might cost you a little more, but if you're in a hurry, uh, it'll uh, uh, you can get it done. And you most of the time uh, stuff is um, with with certain uh, you know the exception of some Apple products, uh, you can change the battery out almost anything pretty quickly. I loved it. I was kind of like oh, because I was all set to ship this thing off. It was kind of funny. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no kidding. Uh, how obvious, Eric. <laughs> By the way, if you are replacing your batteries, you should recycle the old ones. You can take them. The blue and orange stores, and I know electronic stores have usually have a box somewhere to put recycled, dead recycled batteries because you want to keep those out of the landfill. If you're wondering how to support Garden Fork, one way is to shop on Amazon. If you go to the gardenfork.tv homepage, on the right-hand side, there'll be a couple of links to shop at Amazon. And if you use those links, it tells Amazon that you came from Garden Fork. Also, there is a link in our show notes of this episode right now. Or you can just go to gardenfork.tv slash Amazon. That's gardenfork.tv slash Amazon. That'll take you directly to Amazon. It'll tell them that you came from Garden Fork. And we really appreciate that. It really does help. All right. Thank you. I got a really cool comment on our Garden Fork radio episode on the site. And that's actually a neat way to communicate with us is by leaving comments actually on the episode pages of Garden Fork. Uh, and it's from Jacqueline. She goes, hi, Eric. I'm making your easy maple baked beans today. She says, we're having summer weather over here, so I'm figuring we'll have a barbecue. Just wanted to let you know your shows really inspired me. I'm curly, currently making my first batch of kombucha because we had a podcast that inspired her. I remember that. I made mozzarella earlier in the week. The kids didn't like it. I planted my garden in February, and this weekend I'll try out your roasted 
tomato pasta recipe. Cool. Okay. I've learned way more about beekeeping than I ever wanted to know. <laughs> it sounds <laughs> it sounds difficult, so I'll just buy honey. And I really enjoy all the tech stuff that you and Rick talk about. I'm a stay-at-home mom, and I've become very low-tech since I left the workforce, so I'm actually learning a lot as I listen to both of you. Your work has really made a difference in my life. Thank you, Jacqueline. Oh, isn't that nice? So I emailed Jacqueline and said, how did your kombucha come out? And she's really taken it and run with it. Um, she's told me that she discovered that if you keep the lid tight on your kombucha, it will carbonate. And also you can add different things. It sounds like one of the favorites there is that they take uh, ginger and add it in there. And I, I like kombucha, man. It's like it's kind of this bizarre organism that floats in the top of a jar it looks like a alien growing in your kitchen right but it makes some good stuff and that's it's kind of funny because i hit the publish button on this and i don't know what happens most of the time you know <laughs> exactly so it's cool to hear from people that say hey this is what's going on well it's good to know they made a difference the uh yeah i kind of i'm, I'm in the same park with mozzarella i really cannot taste mozzarella my taste buds maybe they're just burned out but uh, I don't quite get that. I like the uh, the stronger stuff, though. I have done your roasted tomato pasta, though. That's wonderful. You know, I actually buy, um, I overbuy cherry tomatoes at Costco. And then I'm like, what am I going to do with this? And I throw them in a roasting pan or, or like a brownie pan or whatever, you know. I cut them in half, put them in their face up, put a little olive oil on them, and then like oregano or Italian seasoning mix or something. Throw them under the broiler and they pop out and I serve them on polenta or pasta um, and sometimes just by themselves and I look like a genius. Right. Uh, you know, baking almost always or roasting almost always makes everything better. Uh, we um, had a run of potato salad. We can only do this, afford to do this because of our weight gain uh, maybe once or twice a summer, but uh, we just had our big run of potato salad. I just, uh, first time in a long time, I have um, roasted the potatoes instead of boiled them, which is uh, when I grew, where I grew up, that's what we did was boil mm -hmm. potatoes. Yep. And, uh, and roasting them gave them such a different flavor and added to the richness and uh, made a better potato salad. And we made a ton of it. So we, but you know, then we ate a ton of it in about two days. So boom. yeah, boom, <laughs> it's gone. So that was cool. Thank you, Jacqueline. So I will. Uh, I hope to hear from her more, updating on her stuff. And yeah, we kind of nerd out on beekeeping, and I know that some people just kind of turn us off at that point. So sorry. Well, the one thing I'd like to say about bees right now is that the uh, uh, bee-informed uh, survey of uh, colony loss for the year was uh, uh, just released, and uh, there was an average loss this year of forty-two percent. Yeah, it's a big number. Big number. So uh, uh, bees are in trouble, and we have not been having the swarm calls this year like I thought we would. So I we, think that's yeah. another indication. Swarm season has not started here yet, but um, I do have a beehive on a roof in Brooklyn this year. So we made um, one video about that already. That's where we put um, we installed a bee package. If you want to watch that, we'll link to it in the show notes here, but it's on our website and on YouTube and uh, iTunes. Oh, talking about iTunes... Thank you to iTunes podcast people. They, uh, I fixed and they fixed the iTunes feed. So all our comments and reviews are back. Uh, it's, it's kind of amazing what they did because I was really worried about it. I thought there goes five years, six years of work down the drain. So, wow. Big thank you to the iTunes people. I, they're yeah. working hard. I mean, they've, they're working all the time. Well, and it's good to know they're paying attention. Yeah. We have a note from Jim. Uh, I just wanted to add a helpful tip for future podcasts. Sometimes I'm running short on time. I see a multiple topic podcast. I'm only interested. In, I'm only interested in one of the three topics. Rather than listen, listen through or jump around listening for clues, I skip the episode altogether. It would be so much easier to get a timestamp breakdown, timestamp breakdown of where each topic begins. Then I could, at the very least, listen to the section I want and not just skip it altogether. Thanks for hearing me out, Eric. So cool. No, okay. I, I would love to do it. Um, and I know that there are other shows that do it. It just comes down to time and the labor involved with that. Um, maybe in the future we can. I, we're going to be launching a, a little ongoing uh, 
Patreon campaign soon. And maybe if we got enough money per episode that we could do that. But it takes quite a bit of time. And I would basically have to transcribe the show and then annotate it, a time stamp it. Um, but in the future, I would love that because I would really like that would also help with our um, search engine optimization as well. So there's twofold there. Yeah. You know, some um, people have, I don't know how it works because I've never produced a podcast, but uh, have uh, chapter markers and yep. uh, they'll have chapters and each topic is a separate chapter and you can jump between those by just hitting the uh, uh, advance on your uh, podcast player. But I don't know how that works. Maybe that's something we can think about though. That might not be real hard to, um, to add in. Chapter mark them. We'll have to, we'll have to learn. Maybe Transom has an article about that. Maybe so. So stay tuned in the future for um, an ongoing uh, funding thing, kind of like NPR. Um, <laughs> you know, I saw uh, my very first uh, Patreon um, uh, request or article the other day in, uh, in Medium magazine. It was an online magazine. Yeah. And uh, I, I, was, I remember you talked about it some, and I said, well, isn't that interesting? So we're working on that. Um, again, it's just it's me coming up with the time to do yet another thing <laughs> you know it, it it is to uh to do these projects and to videotape them and then to edit the videotape or uh you know and and get them out and whatnot it takes a fair amount of time uh, out of your day one reason i don't videotape my projects is half the time they go wrong and i have to take them apart first <laughs> and then put them back <laughs> together and uh you know, it just, it, it really takes a, a big, ch it doubles the time to video almost anything. And yep. you wouldn't, you wouldn't think it, but it really does. All right, cool. But I appreciate Jim sending that. Um, and I appreciate him listening. I appreciate everybody listening. So yep, Mrs. Both of you. and Mrs. Gross listens as well. And we, um, I had a solo show a little earlier and I was talking about the dilemma of figuring out what to make for dinner. And Mrs. Gross says, I had that same issue thinking about it on the way home about what I was going to have for dinner. So I watched some videos. Last night, it took me two hours to make dinner. I didn't know what I wanted for dinner, and I didn't have any broth or noodles. I then wanted to make banana bread, but I had no bananas because <laughs> we had a <laughs> banana bread video. <laughs> I'm not certain if the walnuts I have are from 2014 or 2013. I ended up making pancakes. I should probably stop bringing my laptop into the kitchen. <laughs> mm. <laughs> Yeah, you kind of go down into this uh, this black hole of recipe videos, you know? Yeah. You know, um, we have tons and tons of uh, recipes in our, our recipe box. Actually, it's Evernote now, but uh, we still call it the recipe box. But we have maybe half a dozen that we fall back on on a regular basis um, because it's just, you know, they're dependable. Yeah. Yeah, and, and you can get them done quickly and, and move on. Of course, right now we're in salad season. My romaine lettuce outside just looks so wonderful. It tastes so wonderful. Do you harvest them by the head or do you peel the leaves off the side? We peel the leaves off the side and leave the, the core so they can regenerate pretty quickly. Neat. Cool. It, it's called cut and come again. Yes. Yeah, that technique. We have a, another note here from Chris who left this on our Garden Fork Radio uh, website page. Love Garden Fork Radio and the videos. I find everyone very inspiring to get up and just do something. Looking forward to the next radio show. I listen at work and constantly email myself notes to look at later in the evening. Thanks again, Eric and company. And that was from Chris. He does the same thing I do. Usually, um, of course, I have my headsets in. And I'll, uh, in we have a, I have an iPhone. I'll just click Siri on and make a note to myself. I'll just you know, make a note, such and such. And uh, sometimes I'll get home and have 10 or 15 of them. But, uh, yeah, just always reminding myself of little things I hear on the radio to, uh, to go and do. So you've talked about this before, but could you walk us through that, how you do that? Well, yeah, really all you have to do is turn on Siri, and, uh, which is in the settings. And then if you have a... Uh, uh, headsets that have the microphone on them, uh, just click the button and hold it, and Siri will uh, come on. And you say, make a new note, and you just start talking, and it will put it in the notes file in your uh, 
In your iPhone. In your iPhone. And if you've shared it, it'll actually share it with your computer and that kind of stuff too. But uh, that way, everything you kind of think of, it helps me when I'm, I'm gardening. I'll uh, talk to Siri as I'm uh, laying out my plants. So I can say, you know, uh, I always do, you know, from left to right. And so, you know, number one position, number two position, number three position, then I can go back in and make uh, uh, a note about what I planted there. And, uh, and actually write it down or when I'm in the bees, when I had bees, uh, you know, when I'm up to my elbows and bees, I can make a quick note about, uh, you know, too much drone comb, uh, need to, you know, get in here and get the drones out or, or, or something to, uh, just to remind myself that I have work to be yet to be done. So then that syncs with your, uh, Macintosh computer. And is there a note app on the Macintosh computer or does yes, it email yes, uh-huh. it? Yeah, there's notes on uh, the Macintosh computer and the, on the uh, iPad. So my notes are just everywhere. So, uh, yeah, and then I ignore them, but yeah. uh, at least I have them. <laughs> cool. There you go. All right. I think that makes a pretty good episode. What do you think? I think it makes a pretty good episode. See, like there's something I was going to mention. Oh, I wanted to shout out to my uh, neighbor who may be the most perceptive and best mother I know of in the neighborhood. Okay. Um, uh, she has uh, five children and all of them drive and they have a, a, a driveway full of cars and she needed to uh, spread some mulch. And so she had the people deliver the mulch and drop it on the driveway behind her children's cars. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, sure enough, the next morning, the mulch was on all of the beds, perfectly spread. The driveway was completely clean by almost 10 o'clock. You know, and she didn't have to lift a finger. So, um, yeah, that's uh, that's great mothering as far as I'm concerned. Yeah, that's some great delegation there. You know, if you want to go anywhere, you got to move that pile. Exactly. Sweet. There you go. Okay, well, listen, I'm sorry it's been so long since we talked, but let's uh, let's do this again real soon. Oh, we will. Don't worry yeah. about that. We yeah. um, we just did a show with uh, Eric from Root Simple. That's up right now. And uh, it's, I see it on my uh, list of podcast things. Um, I'm going to go out and I uh, have started my exercise routine again. I, I have to admit, I am kind of a wussy when it comes to cold, and I, I, I duck out during the winter. But uh, six miles a day, uh, I'm committed to it. Uh, and so I, I burned through the podcast and have started back on listening to books uh, on tape or, you know what I mean? Yes. Yeah. Audio books. <laughs> Audio called, books. Audio books, Rick. <laughs> well, it, it, it's interesting, though. Even um, uh, podcasters uh, who have never cut tape in their lives still refer to it as tape when they uh, are uh, talk about, you know, got some good tape. I laid down some good tape. Yeah. Uh, and, you know, they, they've never laid uh, cut tape in their lives. I haven't. <laughs> I have. Okay. <laughs> All right. Thank you for listening. I appreciate you guys uh, downloading the show. As always, if you would go to iTunes and write us a review for Garden Fork Radio using the metadata tag DIY, if you use DIY in your sentence, that'd be really handy um, because there isn't a DIY category on iTunes, actually. So, really? Yeah. We want to emphasize that Garden Fork is in addition to gardening and cooking, we also talk about DIY stuff. So, Well, I've got lots of work to do. I'll see you later, my friend. All right. Thanks, everyone. See you. See you. Bye-bye. Garden Fork's theme music is used under license from uniquetracks.com. Mm-hmm.